welcome to this lecture of the course computer aided power system analysis in the last lecture we have looked into the power flow equations and we also we have also looked into the classification of buses and also we have said that depending upon the type of the buses there are two quantities which are being specified at each and every buses and and the remaining two quantities are to be calculated so then therefore altogether for a n bus system although we do have four n quantities to be known but because we have got only two n uh, two n number of equations so then therefore we need to actually pre specify two n number of quantities so that <coughs> we can calculate the remaining 2n number of quantities by using this 2n number of equations. So, now from this lecture onwards we will be looking into the different methods of solving this 2n power flow equations to calculate this 2n quantities. As we have already mentioned at the end of the last lectures essentially we are interested to calculate the voltage magnitudes and the angles at each and every bus. because if we know the voltage magnitude and the angle at each and every bus we are able to calculate the value of injected real and reactive power at each and every bus. So, then therefore, we really need not calculate the injected value of P and Q i at the other buses explicitly we, we actually should only concentrate on calculating the voltage magnitude and angle and, and after that having the knowledge of voltage magnitude and angle with us we would be able to calculate the values of p and t and q i and also the other quantities in the system for example, the line current magnitudes, line current angles, power flow at each and every lines everything, everything would be known once we know the voltage magnitudes and angles at each and every bus. So, now let us again look at this power flow equation just to recollect we just recollect this power flow equations. So, power flow equations are P i V i V k Now, because of the presence of cosine and sine terms, so these equations are non-linear equations. So, then therefore, our power system is actually represented by a set of 2 n non-linear simultaneous algebraic equations which we need to solve for the voltage magnitudes and the angles at each and every bus. Now, because these equations are non-linear equation, so then therefore, there is no uh, closed form solution of these equations. So, we have to only solve them by using some appropriate numerical method. Now, for solving these power flow equations usually we do use four different numerical methods actually this is three. So, these methods are so numerical methods are one is Gauss Seidel, then Newton Raphson. Now, Newton Raphson has two versions one is polar, one is rectangular. We will discuss what is mean by this polar and as well as rectangular version, rectangular, and third is first decoupled. So, 
So then therefore there are although there are three major types there are actually four types Gauss Seidel, Newton Raphson polar, Newton Raphson rectangular and fast decoupled method for solving these power flow equations to calculate the voltage magnitudes and angles at each and every bus. Now today in this lecture we would be talking about the basic Gauss Seidel method to introduce you the basic Gauss Seidel method such that I mean once we know this very very basic Gauss Seidel method that how does it proceed so then we would be able to apply it for solving these equations. So let us today our task is to discuss about the basic Gauss Seidel numerical method. So we are discussing today basic Gauss Seidel numerical Say suppose there are n unknowns, there are unknowns, there are n unknowns x1, x2 up to xn and also there are n equations n non-linear simultaneous non-linear algebraic equations say f1, x1, x2 up to xn is equal to 0. Remember f1 is a function of x1, x2 and xn. So, this is basically any expression. Now, here we are not assuming any particular form of f1, I mean this can be anything f2, x1, x2 x2, xn is equal to 0 dot 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 fn, x1, x2, xn is equal to 0. So, here f1, f2, fn are essentially nothing but the functions of x1, x2, xn. So, then therefore, these functions are basically representing some equations involving x1, x2, xn. And here in this case, we are not assuming any particular form of these functions, they can be any, any function having all kind of nonlinearities. Just as an example, an example. Suppose my unknowns are x1, x2, x3, suppose there are 3 unknowns and one equation is let us say f1 is let us say I am just drawing it arbitrarily here x1 square x2 plus tan x2, x3, x1 plus 5, let us say this is f1 f2 x1 x2 x3 is let us say root over x1 x2 by x3 plus x3 whole square by x1 square plus x2 cube plus 6 and f3 is x1 x2 x3 is let us say cosine of x1 by x2 plus sine of x3 by x1 plus x2 plus 10. Remember here simply we have written arbitrarily these functions. So, here you know all kind of nonlinear as there, there is a square, there is a tangent function, there is a cosine function, there is a sine function, there is a root over, there is square, everything, there is a cube, everything, everything. So then here what we have, so essentially what we want to stress that there is absolutely no limitation of this form which this functions f1, f2, fn can take, I mean this can be any functions. So now having these original equations, then what we do is, we transform these original equations, transform 
the original equations as we say we actually express x1 as some other function of x g1 x xn x2 as some other function of g2 x1 x2 xn and xn as some other function of x1 x2 xn for example if we take this if we take these examples for example from the first equation we can say that x1 is equal to again for example if we take this first equation example continued from the first equation we can write down that x1 is equal to plus minus root over minus of by x2 x2 is from the second equation it would be from x2 is for example from second equation x1 x2 x3 So, x2 by x3 would be equal to 6 plus x3 square by so x2 is equal to 6 plus x3 square plus x1 square plus x2 cube whole square into x3 by x1. Similarly, from the third equation x3 can be represented. For example, from the third equation x3 would be x1 plus x2 into sin inverse a where a is minus 10 minus 10 plus cosine. So, you see here so from the original equations by using some simple algebra we can simply represent x1 x2 and x3 as some other function of x1 x2 x3 some function. So, we need not really worry now here you can see from these three expression it is just not possible to calculate the or rather to find out the expression of x1, x2 and x3 by any closed form solutions we have to use some kind of numerical techniques. So, now how do we proceed? So, because it is not possible to find out any closed form solution, so we have to uh, apply some numerical techniques. So, so, to solve them what we do is we simply take start with some initial guess. of the unknowns that is we assume some values we take some educated guess depending upon the problem we take some educated guess fortunately in our case when we in our case for the power system analysis it is very easy to take this educated guess. So, we really did not worry about our case that from where we would be getting this educated guess for our case would be always be able to get this guess. So, what we do is that we first take some educated guess x 1 naught x 2 naught x x n naught then what we do 
then calculate, then update. Now, what we update? We update x1 at the first iteration as function g1 and we replace x1 0, x2 0, xn 0. When we try to update x to 1, then we use this function g 2. Now, in the first equation, we have used x 1 0, because when we are trying to update x 1, we did not have any other value x 1, but when, when we are trying to update x 2, we have already calculated x 1. So, then therefore, for g 2, instead of using x 1 0, we use x 1 1, the latest value available, but for x 2, we did not have as yet. For x3, g3, for x1 and x2, we have already got, but for x3, we did not get as yet at this right hand side, we are trying to calculate xn0 and dot dot dot. So, then xi1 would be gi x1 1 dot 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 x i 1 then x i plus 1 0. Please note that <coughs> sorry x y x i 0 0 sorry sorry x i 0 x y n plus 0 and x n 0 and then dot 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 last x n 1 would be g n x 1 1, x 2 1, dot dot dot, x n minus 1 1, x n 0. So, that means, everywhere we are simply taking the most updated value and x 1 1, I mean this one basically stands for the iteration count. So, this is the first iteration, first iteration, first iteration, first iteration, first iteration. So, what we do? We first take an educated guess x 1 0, x 2 0, x n 0 and then we update and whenever you are updating all this, all these variables, we always use the most updated values whenever we are substituting this values. After we do this updation once, then what we do? We calculate we calculate error e i as x i 1 minus x i 0, that is the magnitude for all i is equal to 1 to n. So, then therefore, you would be getting n values of error e i and because we are taking the magnitude whether this value is more than this or less than this, this value e i would be always a positive quantity. Then we calculate maximum error, max error as the maximum of e 1, e 2, e n. If this max error, if max error is less than some epsilon, that is some threshold values, then the algorithm converges converges. Otherwise, we we repeat the process. So, so now, so then what do we do? We first take initial guess, we update, we calculate this error, we calculate the maximum error and if this maximum error is less than some threshold, usually this threshold is taking 10 to the power minus 6 at least. If this particular threshold value, I mean if 
this maximum error is actually less than this threshold value we say that my algorithm is converged so that means these values are not really changing much so then therefore they are converged otherwise we simply repeat so then in the second iteration what we do we simply use g1 x11 x21 up to xn1 x22 that is in the second iteration that is we are trying to update the value of x2 corresponding to the second iteration that we will use g2 into x12 because here we have already calculated here we have already calculated the updated value of x1 corresponding to the I mean, second iteration so x12 but here you would be using x21 then xn1 and so on and so forth so then therefore if we look into the algorithm so the what would be the steps of the algorithm so the so the steps of the algorithm steps of the algorithm would be take initial guess x1 0 x2 0 up to xn 0 then we take a set iteration count k is equal to 1 then we update the variables as x1 corresponding to kth iteration. Now, here when you have started count k is equal to 1, so here at this stage we have k have set been 1, so it is x1 1 so it would be g1 x1 now when we are calculating when we are trying to update x1 at kth iteration we still do not so we have we have only got the last value so it would be corresponding to k minus 1 th iteration so now because he, here k is equal to 1 so it would be x1 0 then x2 k minus 1 dot 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 xn k minus 1 x2 corresponding to kth iteration it will be g2 it would be x1 k because we have already got this x1 k here from this equation but for x2 we have not we are trying to calculate so we have got only this value right now and then dot 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 xn k minus 1. x i i th it would be g i x 1 k x 2 k dot 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 we would have by now solved or rather updated the up to i a i minus 1 th variable corresponding to this k th iteration right but when we are when we have to use the value of xi in this equation we still do not have anything so it would be xi corresponding to k minus 1th iteration that is the last iteration and dot 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 xn into k minus 1 and xn k g n x 1 k x 2 k dot 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 x n minus 1 k because we have already up updated up to n th n minus 1 th variable in this iteration, but nth variable we have not yet updated so we only know this so we do this updation 
after we do this operation then we calculate E i k that is the kth corresponding to kth iteration as x i k minus x i k minus 1 that is the absolute value of the difference between the present value of ith variable minus the value of ith variable corresponding to the last iteration for all i is equal to 1 to n. So, we do this calculation for all variables, all n variables. Then we calculate maximum error, maximum error as E max k corresponding to the kth iteration as max E 1 k E 2 k E n k. If E max k is less than some threshold then the algorithm then the algorithm converges and print the result else go to step 7. Now, what we do in step 7? Step 7 is increment k is equal to k plus 1. So, we now increment the iteration count and 8 go to step 3. So, we calculate maximum error. If this maximum error is less than some threshold value, our algorithm stops. If it is not less than this, we then increment the iteration count and then we can start doing this same updation again and again. So, we do this. So, so then we simply repeat this calculation again and again such that and after some time, if our <coughs> initial guesses are good enough, so then after some time this algorithm will algorithm will converge, converge in a sense that there will be not much an difference between the calculated values of all the variables between two consecutive iterations. And if there is not much of a difference between the calculated values of any variable between two consecutive iterations, we say that my algorithm has converged and we say that this uh, calculation is finished and then we take the final print. Usually, epsilon is usually at least 10 to the power minus 6. So, then therefore, because epsilon is 10 to the power minus 6, so then therefore, we are simply assuring here that the change in the variable if at all it occurs, it will only occur only after 5 decimal point. So, then therefore, if any change is occurring only after 5 decimal point for any variable for all practical engineering purpose that value is constant. So, then therefore, we can say that the algorithm has converges and the 
final value of all the variables have been obtained. So, with this basic knowledge of this uh, basic procedure of the gauss seidel iteration method, in the next class we will apply this method for the solution of our power flow equations. Thank you.